Hey guys, Jess from Knockout Print Shop, and today I have a kind of different video for you. You can see this is not my planner. This is a printed out printable insert workbook, whatever you want to call it. So my friend Megan over at Lovely Sunday's uh, studio, her and I collaborated to make a little 2020 reflection workbook. I was trying to come up with video topics related to kind of where we are at in the year. It's almost the end of 2020. And I thought this is a good time to obviously do a reflection, take an inventory, kind of do a personal audit of your past year as you head into the new year. Now this kind of exercise can be great for anybody, regardless if you're super into goals or not. Um, you can use this just as a tool to reflect on the year and see how you're feeling and if you want to set goals with it, cool. If you don't, that's cool too. It can just be a reflective kind of exercise. I think this can also go really well with your um, Moxie Life compass that's in the front of this or even your Inkwell Press goal setting. So whatever you're using as far as your tool um, as a planner or a goal setting tool for next year, you can do this exercise and accompany that with whatever other preparation tools you're using, power sheets, anything like that. And I'm sure there's tons of overlap because none of us are here to reinvent the wheel. We just take and add our own little spin to things that are already out there that work and are, you know, we just want to tweak it to flow the way we think is ideal. Okay, enough rambling. I'm not making sense. Okay, so basically what this is, I did not print the cover page or the instructional page because those have lots of printing on them. And, you know, we're all kind of printing on home printers and no one wants to waste all their ink. And I'm explaining the process to you. So you don't need to see the, <laughs> the cover page. So anyways, what you're going to do, there's a prompt at the number at the bottom of each page. There is 14 prompts you're going to go through. I believe it's prompts one through 10 is kind of your reflection piece. And then we'll go through the second piece. I haven't done this yet. You can see mine is blank. I have yet to sit down and do my own personal process of reflecting and goal setting. But we'll just kind of talk through this and I can tell you some things that I would probably put down here as an example. Okay, so first things first, we're going to start on a high note and look at our wins from this year. So I have this prompt here that says, this year I acknowledge myself for. This is a phrase I acknowledge myself for that I used a lot and was um, taught in life coaching school. And this is a way to take things that you're beating yourself up with and whatever and find the acknowledgement in that. So this does not necessarily have to be the only prompt you use when you think back on wins, but I think it's pretty accurate as to say, like, we want you here to look at things that you've achieved. Um, they don't have to be big. Maybe you um, improved your drinking water. You got your sleep up. You um, made it through the year alive. I mean, whatever. It doesn't have to be anything. Your kids are still, you know, you didn't lose your mind completely trying to homeschool your kids during COVID. Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be kind of monumental. I started a business or I got out of debt. It does not have to be big. Think about anything and everything that could be a win from 2020. So for me, wins, let's see, would be um, we bought our house, we started our homestead, um, I started doing some marketing work for a company, I met some new friends. There's a lot of things that I could put down that kind of cover a variety of areas of life, but just to kind of sit there and go, what was the good things, the things I put effort towards that I achieved this year? Okay, I think that gets the point across in probably too many words. Okay, so that's prompt number one. Matt printed this double-sided for me, so we're going to flip over to prompt number two. So then we go into challenges. And so the prompt here says, this year I experienced or overcame. All of us, regardless of 2020 and the craziness, we all go through challenges every year, financial, personal, relational, social, career, family, whatever. And it's important to look back at the things, the obstacles, the challenges you went through. It doesn't necessarily mean to me need to mean that you've at this point overcame it. That's why I put experienced or dealt with or overcame. And you can journal here. You Maybe you went through something and there's still ling lingering impacts from that you have not yet resolved. Um, maybe you're in the process of overcoming something. You know, you made it through the challenge of COVID. You made it through the challenge of homeschooling. You made it through the challenge of um, changes in your business, family changes, whatever. Just kind of journaling through what did, what did this year bring you to, um, what tested you this year? And if you did overcome those or in the process of overcoming, or even if they're still lingering, kind of make notes of that. Because again, you're taking an inventory, doing an audit of your life to kind of figure out where things are, how they went, all of that. So that's prompt number two. 
move to prompt number three is highlight. So this is different than wins. This we're looking more at memories. This doesn't have to be something you achieved. But you can see my best memories from 2020 are, I should, guess I should have said were, <laughs> um, but anything. Maybe you had a fun experience over the holidays. Maybe you had a funny memory with somebody on Zoom, like whatever. Just kind of think about even in the midst, again, I'm going to keep saying this, of a very weird year that there's, there's always little bits of good and highlights we can find from even dark times. So find some mental space to make room for thinking about best memories that you had, highlights from this past year. That's number three. Number four, we had like an ink issue here, is gratitudes. So you can see we're kind of ebbing and flowing. All these things are kind of connected, but they have a little nuance difference in each one. So gratitudes. I like to think about gratitudes as ways, obviously we know what that is, things that we're thankful for, but a lot of times this, this exercise of thinking about gratitudes is beneficial when there's things you're complaining about. So this is another thing I learned in life coaching schools. And we, we had to go through this exercise where we tracked all of our complaints for I think it was like a month. Talk about a fun journal. But at the same time, we had to say in this complaint, in this negative mental space I'm in, where is the gratitude? Where's the opportunity? Maybe you're saying, um, I'm trying to think of something simple. Like you were complaining that you were late to work because people were driving slow or something like that. And you could say, well, the I'm glad I had the, I'm grateful for the opportunity to become more self-aware of my pa the limitations of my patients. So you can get really creative. Sometimes complaints are hard to overcome because they feel just irritating and they grind on us. But that's another way to look at gratitudes. Obviously, there's the things we just kind of go through that we're grateful for, family, health, um, finances, roof over our head, all of that. Those are good. And I want you to definitely I encourage you to keep those general gratitudes on here. But I also encourage you to look at things you complained about this year or um, things that frustrated you, even your challenges, the challenges that you had and, and shift those into gratitude. So use this exercise to not just be your general, I'm grateful for my family, I'm grateful for this. How can you, how can you spin, shift, tweak some of the hard parts of this year and find the gratitude in that? So expand on this exercise more than just kind of your surface level stuff, if that makes sense. Okay, number, nope, we're going here. Number five, so this one I'm calling evaluate. So this is evaluate work, what worked and didn't work in 2020 so you can make any adjustments needed to succeed in the new year. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You wanna kind of take an inventory of what worked this year and what didn't work. This can be everything from habits to routines to relationships to, um, I don't know, things you tried. Maybe you tried a workout routine and it didn't work. Maybe you tried um, a new PM routine to get better sleep and it did work. So you really want to look at over the year all the things that you tried and you did and figure out what worked and didn't work. And if you want to can kind of dive deeper into that, you can also explore why. Like why didn't this habit work? Why didn't this routine work? Or why did it work? Because the digger, the digger, the deeper you dig, you'll get more information that'll allow you to continue the stuff that's working and then tweak the stuff that isn't so that you can progress and not just stay stuck. So again, another, these are all just different forms of taking inventory slash doing a personal audit of the various areas of your life. Okay, so that's evaluate. The next one is just titled projects. What's the status of tasks, big or small, you took on this year? So when you look back over 2020, what things did you complete? What is incomplete? And incomplete can mean still in progress, um, it can mean things that you let go of that didn't matter, things that um, you just neglected, any of those things. However, this is all however you want to use it. But this is anything big and small. Maybe you um, finally cleaned out your closet this year. You made that phone call. You set up the doctor's appointment. You um, painted that piece of furniture you were going to paint. You called the bank finally. To, whatever it is, these projects don't have to be big. They don't have to be small. They can be anything, whatever worked for you. Things that didn't get complete. Maybe you're like, oh, every month I was saying I was going to do this thing and I never did it. That goes on here. So really, again, taking an inventory of projects, tasks, whatever word you'd like to use for it that you took on this year, assess whether they got completed or not. And when you think about projects, again, I why I wrote on here big or small is because sometimes people think of projects. That word has this like feeling of it needs to be complicated, complex, big, long, whatever. And it doesn't. A project can be 
Um, something again, like as simple as let me here, let me think of an example of a project that's more simple. Like again, like calling the doctor or um, calling the bank. Like that's a project. Like it still takes mental effort and energy and time. So don't think it has to be this multi-step project that was like this big endeavor. It can be, but it can also be small, smaller things, just like tasks. Okay, that's number six. Num. Oh, we already did that one. This is what happens when I have him print it two-sided. Okay. Adjustments, things I added and removed this year. So it's prompt seven. So basically, pretty self-explanatory. This can be anything. Are there friendships you added? Are there friendships you let go? Are there um, foods you added to your diet? Foods you let go? Um, maybe you added um, a routine and you removed something else that wasn't working. Maybe you um, added a habit, removed a habit. This can be added a line of your budget, removed a line of your budget. This can be however you want, but what things over the course of the year did you add and bring into your life and what things did you remove? For example, for me on this one, you know, I added the podcast, I added the blog, we added the homestead, but I also <laughs> removed the podcast and removed the vlog because I realized that I couldn't do um, as much as I thought I could. So if you see a you know, this is really imbalanced. Like you've added a bunch of things to your life and you already were kind of overwhelmed and you didn't take anything away. Maybe that's why you're feeling so overwhelmed and, and maybe frustrated and burnt out. Or maybe this was the year of the purge and you removed a lot of things and you're in this weird limbo state of like, where do I go now? Just kind of going and figuring out what tweaks you've already made will help you figure out what tweaks you need to make going forward. So we'll talk about that piece next. Number eight. This is, I'm just calling this analytics. I couldn't think of a better word for this. Write down any data you feel is relevant. This can be business sales, school grades, habit scores. So let me explain this one a little bit. I had a hard time like being very concise with my instructions here, but essentially I kind of thought of this as like professional and personal. And I know not everybody is currently working in a career or um, some people are at home or some people are at school. So this can be work, learning, school, business, whatever, however you want this to be the other side that's different than your personal life, like marriage, family, kids, friends. Like I'm thinking this is personal and this is some version of your work, however you want to describe that. So if you're a stay-at-home parent, that can also be considered work, like that's your job, right? If you're a kid that's in school, a young person in school, or, or not a young person, but you are in school, maybe that's your professional thing. Again, make this work for you. Maybe you don't like this header. Get rid of it. That's cool too. So essentially, here's what I'm thinking is like you need to, we all need to do an audit at the end of the year. Like in business, it's kind of like running a profit and loss statement, right? And going, this is where I spent. This is where I, um, you know, this is where my sales were. This is where my social media analytics were. These, you're looking at real relevant numbers, data, not how we feel. Some of these other things, some of these other things are really concrete. Like did you finish or not finish a project? Some of them might be more um, subjective things, how you feel, how you felt about challenges you overcame, you know, gratitude. Some of this is, again, we're, we're kind of like thinking in both sides of our brain, like the very analytical side of our brain. Some of us are good at that part. Some of us are better at the feelings part. So we're kind of like focusing on both things here. So when we get to this one, this is obviously the more analytical part. And we do need to look at raw data if we are on a growth journey, right? Because we can't just keep doing things and not looking back and going, did this work? And review this data so that we can strategically move forward. And I'm not saying we're like robots. We need to like, I am going to do this now because of this. I don't want you to be robotic because we're, humans are more complex than that. But we also need to bring in a little bit of concrete data so we can make the best choices possible moving forward. Okay, rambling, I think that makes sense. So business thing could be like business sales. Again, this might be a spot where you can track your Google analytics if you run a business, social media analytics, whether you run a business or you just like tracking your social data because you're trying to grow a social media following. Maybe you have a blog. Um, maybe you started email marketing, whatever it is. Maybe you sit here and you go, let me look at all the relevant data to my business. Let's say you um, are working for somebody. You have a job. You can look at um, any you know, did you, how was your performance? Like how did your performance reviews go for work this year? If you're in charge of anything in your job that has to do with improving the, that business's growth and sales, maybe you note that. Um, 
Maybe you got a promotion. That's a hard and fast thing. That was a growth in income. Um, that kind of stuff. Maybe you are homeschooling kids or taking care of your home. Maybe analytics are things like um, kid, your kids' grades on how they did with school, how you felt about, ma- you know, did you, what percent of the time were, was everybody on track? I'm just trying to think outside of the box because I know not everybody runs a business or is in um, out of the home working. So use this however you see fit to put down concrete data for your relevant, this section of your life. For personal, what I'm thinking here is really based on things that are concrete, like your habit scores. You know, again, I've always talked about like we go through this tool, use this tool of habit trackers, right? But are we really using it? Are we just checking things off the box and never looking back and going, oh, like out of 30 days, I did this 20 times. That's pretty good percentage. I can't do math that fast, so I don't know what the exact percentage is. But let's say I'm looking at if I go year, the whole year, 90% of the time, I was consistent with my exercise routine or 90% of the time I was on budget. Whatever it is, write down your, maybe write down each habit and the score you give yourself for the time that you worked on that habit um, throughout the year and not like how you feel like you did, the raw, actual, concrete data. So that's kind of what I think of with personal, but again, you can interpret this however you want. Maybe there's other like concrete data type of things in your personal life that you can look at on here. And we're going to hit finances on another page, so I didn't really want to dedicate too much here to that, but you can definitely use it for that if you'd like. Okay, that's seven, eight. Okay, so here we go into financials. I'm calling this the financial check-in. And we're keeping this super simple. You can dive as deep into this as you want. You can get out journal paper. You don't even have to write on here. Maybe you just open this up on your iPad and you journal it in your bullet journal, however you want to do it. But this is review your 2020 financials. How are you doing in each category? What did you earn? What did you spend? What did you save or invest? And how much debt did you accrue or pay off? This is obviously going to look different for everybody. For me, financially, I would go in here and I would look, I'd run a PL for our business because that's how we pay ourselves. And I would look at how much money we profited. That's our income because we have passed through income. How much we spent, I would personally, for me, I would look at YNAB and I would get a sense of each category where I spent. Um, I did not use YNAB the previous year, so I unfortunately don't have any comparative data that I could use, but maybe looking just generally at where I spent in each area and going, oh, okay, I can shift this next year to open up some money for savings. So you're looking at where you spent, looking for trends and patterns, and this will allow you to assess the changes you need to make going forward to open up money for other things. That could be for debt repayment, for savings, or investments. So again, everybody's little quadrants here are going to look a little bit different. And then saved and invested. If you are still in debt repayment, saving and investing is probably not your journey right now. So earned, spent, and debt repayment or is going to, or accrual is going to be kind of where you are. Um, If you're somebody that's at this point debt free, earned, spent, and saved or invested might be important. So saved here, um, For us, we saved to buy the house, and obviously we we bought the house, so we did accrue some debt that actually goes over here, even though we're debt-free other than the house. Um, And then any investments we made into the business, our IRAs, um, our investments, and things like that. So this is, again, going to look different, but sitting here, and you don't even have to write on here. Maybe you have digital tools you want to use to look up this, and you're just going to use this to guide your kind of audit. Look at your YNAB budget or your Mint or every dollar, whatever you're using. Look, you know, at the stuff you would maybe pull out to do your taxes and look at all your debts. And this can just be kind of a, a uh, instructional piece and you can use whatever tools you need to get this information. It doesn't have to be on here, of course. Okay, okay. The last one in our review section. So this is goal review, analyze your progress on your 2020 goals. So I kind of put this again in quadrants. We have achieved, in progress, let go, didn't start. So this is just taking a time to literally fill in the blanks, right? Like what goals did I set out at the beginning of the year to achieve and which ones did I achieve? Which ones are still work in progress? And this is great. We don't hate this category at all because goals take a lot of repetition to achieve. So if you have a lot of stuff in here, that's fantastic. It's also great if you let things go. I personally did that. I had goals at the beginning of the year that some some I started and did for a while, even months and thought, after doing it for all, this isn't serving the purpose that it intended. My lifestyle's changed. Time to let it go. So it would be achieved, achieved and let go. Again, my example would be the podcast and the vlog for my personal stuff. Um, 
and then you know maybe there's ones that you think at beginning of the year you thought would be great and then you let those go because you decided you didn't need it there was ones like I was gonna work on practicing piano and practicing French I decided once we bought this house I didn't need to fill my time with other hobbies my house and homestead was my hobby so those didn't even get started <laughs> those got didn't start slash let go so or maybe it was something you really wanted to do and the truth be told you didn't even start it and this whole exercise is about being real and honest with ourselves and it's okay to have things that you didn't start that you truly intended and still want to do so they weren't let go they didn't get not started and let go because of um, an intentional reason still write that down because this is good data to think about going forward so okay once you go through prompts one through ten i my ideal recommendation would be to just go back and look at your answers and the other thing you can do with this activity is involve a spouse, a friend, a loved one, um, a buddy, a planner buddy, and share this information. Because sometimes talking through these things, I don't know about you, obviously you know I like to talk. I do better when I can talk through this versus when I'm sitting in silence and journaling. I'm a, my brain gets ignited through communication. So I like sitting down with Matt and going like, what do you think about this? And then he can be like, well, this, but maybe this, because you said this, you know, and like, helps hold not only allows my brain to flow better but it helps hold me accountable so if you have a buddy maybe you take a pass at this whole thing solo and then you share this with somebody and say what do you think about these things and you might think oh dang i forgot i achieved this this year or um, oh yeah that's right i said i was going to do that and i didn't or something like that so go through that maybe share it don't have to obviously read through your answers think about your goals Think about everything from 2020. Maybe you are a journaler and you want to journal more, but that's phase one, right? Then we go into phase two, where we take where we take everything that we reflected on, the audit and inventory we did, and we start to look ahead a bit. So lessons based on your 2020 reflection, what lessons did you learn? So if you're looking at your goals, your financial check-in, your wins, your memories, what stands out as lessons you learned? Like for me, if you watch my last video. It's a lot about less is more, um, realizing that I can't focus on too many things at one time, that I'm better focusing on an essentialism type of mindset going forward with my goals and my life, um, different things like that. So just any lessons that come to light as you are looking at these things. Maybe you didn't start a few goals and you're realizing, oh, I, I set too many goals, or the lesson you learned was that you need to shift your priorities, that you're learning that you um, need to change your environment so you, it helps you achieve your goals. I mean, who knows? We could go talk about this for hours, but just journal on the lessons that you've learned from this past year. Once you kind of think about your lessons, the next things we're going to do is another add and remove. So this is 2021 tweaks, things I want to add or remove for 2021. So now again, you've done your reflection and you have maybe in 2020 added and removed things, but now going forward, what do you need to add and remove? Are there relationships that are just not working and that needs to be removed? You can also make this altered. I, maybe I should have made this like a trio, like remove or tweak, right? Because when it comes to things like removing relationships, sometimes that means just changing the dynamic or the boundaries of a relationship. So you can you know, make a line here and add your like adjust kind of column. Um, but maybe you need to add on a new habit. Maybe you need to remove... Um, Again, like this is the same thing. Maybe you realize you spent way too much in one area. So it's like add on savings, you know, $10 a month, remove spending on this. I don't know. Again, everyone's situation is going to be different, but that's the kind of thing I'm thinking is when you look back on 2020, what things do you now next year need to add to your life and remove to your life? It doesn't care if this list has one thing, nothing, or a million things because this is more of a brain dump. So don't get nuanced yet. Okay, so that's 12. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Then we go into super brain dump, which I'm calling what's next. Use this page as a brain dump to jot down ideas on what's next for you in 2021. Ponder things you want to work on, projects you want to start or complete, habits you want to build, possible goals you want to achieve. The sky's the limit. So this is a two-page just kind of journal, and we have this open space if you're someone that likes to doodle, where you are just going to brain dump. If you just start thinking of 2021, all of those things. What do you want to do? What do you want to remove? What habits do you want to build at the end of 2021? How would you know you had a good year? Who cares? It doesn't even matter if any of that stuff happens. Just write anything that comes to mind down. Again, this can be a shared process with somebody else if you help, are better talking through things like me. But the whole point is don't 
at this point yet. Try to put things into categories, set your goals yet in nuanced ways um, or granular. Just dump, dump, dump. Just get it all out. Okay, then we goal set. This is where I think you can definitely take something like the Moxie Life Compass Assessment in her planner um, or any other goal planners kind of piece. And this is something I think for me that I'm going to use to simplify my goals for this year so that I can feel like I'm a bit more focused. So now that you've completed your 2020 reflection and spent time jotting down ideas for 2021, it's time to set your goals. Pick three areas of life you'd like to focus on. So I've already, let me see if I can show you. I've got stuff everywhere per usual. I've already done one pass at the compass assessment here in my Moxie and already noticed that in pretty much every area, my, my score went up. Most of it, this has to do with me buying the house and starting the homestead. So that is great. And what I'm going to do is take this I'm going to probably do another pass at it and have Matt score me too, because that always helps me stay a little bit more honest. But um, I'm going to pick the three areas that I want to focus on. And likely at my first kind of brain dump as I'm doing this now, as I'm thinking it is homestead stuff. So everything to do with our homestead, our animals, all of that. Two is going to be work slash business. Um, not only knockout print shop, but some other things I'm doing with that marketing company. I'm really enjoying like project management and co business coaching with people. So this is going to be an area I really want to explore is work, learning, business. And then the last one, I'm not 100% sure. So I have to kind of figure that out. But those are my main two. And then I have here set one goal per area. Now, even if you have more goals, I really encourage you to make this exercise one goal. So like for me, if it was homestead, my one goal per air for this area of homestead may be to add on one new animal or um, get the barn ready or something like that. For work, it might be explore um, marketing uh, certifications or um, get one new client, something like that. And then down here, you can see how this is in a column situation brain dump some action steps again this whole exercise is supposed to be a brain dump it's not supposed to be a hard and fast like this is exactly what's going to happen this year in this exact way so this is just to get if you could only achieve one thing this year in each of these areas what would you want to achieve what would make that year 2021 a success if you could achieve one goal in each of your three top areas and then obviously some ideas on steps to get there okay so this is a free download you can find it in the description of this video um, all you gotta do is join the mailing list, become a knockout VAP, and you will get a direct link to download this. It is not something you could do digitally on, um, your iPad. We did not make it like a digital thing where you can write on it. So you do have to print it out. You don't need to print out the first two pages or the last page where it's instructions. That way you can save some ink. Um, and definitely you can use this in conjunction with whatever other goal setting tools you are using this year. But this whole thing again was a collab with my friend Meg over at Lovely Sundays. Um, I'll leave her information below. She's a graphic designer, so if you're looking for design services, hit her up. Um, but again, this, just this was prompted out of my idea to think of like, what lists do people need, do I need going into 2021 that will help me reflect and goal set? Like these are the lists. If I was gonna come up with a list of lists, <laughs> these are the lists or the prompts that I think are definitely helpful to take some time to ponder as you go into the new year. All right, guys, so that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you do take advantage of this free download and how it worked for you, if it was helpful, if some lists were more beneficial to you than others, or if you think I'm missing any prompts, let me know if there's other things you think are important as you reflect and go into the new year. All right, guys, that is all, and I will see you in the next one.